Hello, everybody, and welcome to hey. the EFAP Super Chat Catch Up Mini Episode for 287. The one where apparently YouTube critics are lying to you. Mm. <gasps> we went over. I'm sure a we were all very convinced. They are all video. lying to us. Oh, yeah, easily, obviously. As we found out with Outlaws, well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, 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 I mean. <laughs> You know, some, some of them are lies, they're just really nice descriptions of things. You know, it's, it's all about a point of view, Rex. You'd like some From a certain like point something. of view. Yeah, that lying section. The YouTubers are lying. That's what Luke needed to say in that scene. He'd be like, you were just lying, man. What the fuck? I'm a YouTuber. You get paid off? And Obi-Wan's like, no, maybe. Subscribe to my Patreon. Obi-Wan would have a Patreon, wouldn't he? Bastard. Anyway, he doesn't make enough. He didn't make enough money cutting up his little meat cubes. Nope, poor fella. We're gonna answer your messages, all of them, starting with Real Madrid or Dortmund. What do you think? Or Dortmund? Sorry, what? I guess it's football. Those are football teams, right? So which do I you like think the wins? Kansas City Chiefs. I like the ones that win that all the time. The Football or is that American football though? That's the oh, Kansas yeah. City Chiefs. Which one are yeah. they? They're the ones. They're the from Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri. No, which football? Which kind of football? Oh, the NFL. Ah, right. So that's not that's not in the spirit of the question. Oof. You need to pick an American soccer team, as you would call them. Um, I don't think I know one. I don't think I could tell you the name of an yeah, American I don't know soccer either. team. <laughs> I'm gonna guess the. Long. I'm gonna guess the New Orleans, um, Ragin Cajuns. Sweet. All right. Hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, man. I I don't know if you have a sports related question. I don't know how much with a perfect be able to podcast. Help you out. <laughs> yeah. Don't bother on that one. Uh, happy gay month, Mola. Hope it is significantly gayer for you than the previous non-gay months. Yeah, well, oh, thank how you. gay has your uh, gay month been? Was yeah, pretty a, gay. Was pretty it a gay. particularly gay month, or just kind it of? It didn't really stand out, but I think it was actually more gay than usual. It just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting used to it. Could be that. Maybe it's just because you live such a gay life. Could be that. That it doesn't seem particularly, you know, gay in comparison. Mm-hmm. Probably it. Raggleton Bear, have you finally Yo. defeated the Screecher V? Yes, I did, and I'm so glad that I did. <laughs> now let us be rid of it. <laughs> In the old yes, EU, I did. this creature is gone. There was a clone of Luke named Luke. So Luke with an extra U. I'm not kidding. <laughs> also, Anakin destroyed the Death Star. I heard it from one of the Acolyte actors. Yep. I mean... Thematically, that works to name Luke that because a clone is just another you anyway, right? Oh, I, I mean, that's, yeah. I, oh, but if you explain it, it takes away the mysticism. It it, it takes away the uh, intrigue. It is like, more what? mystical to say, "My name is Luke." That's right. Yeah. Like, How's that spelled? Nah, sorry. L U U K E. <laughs> and then it gets ruined. Like you said. Sorry, did you stutter? Uh, w. <laughs> L-W-K-E. <laughs> what? L-W-K-E. Look. That's what I said. Look. Uh, you should cover In Praise of Shadows, Hills of Eyes video where he compares the cannibals to black people and calls the protagonists colonizers. I'm aware of that video. He I got know about it, yeah. blitzed Shout by a whole bunch of people. So. Yeah. That was a bad video. That was fun to, to, to watch people's coverage of that video. Funniest part for me was finding out that this is like far from the first time he'd done stuff like that. He, he does it with like all kinds of films, apparently. Just like whatever bizarre take you could imagine, he'd be like, this is actually what it's about. It, it, it feels yeah, to me it's actually it's about the... the plight of this minority group. And actually, it's really, uh, yeah, by the way, just so you know. It's one of the endpoints like this, of one of the several options for brain rot, where you'd be like, <laughs> the cannibals were black people. What? Actually, the aliens are Vietnamese. Oh, no. I'll have you know. <laughs> uh, check out Salako. It's a shooter with intelligent enemies inspired by fear. 
What game? Fear. Did you guys ever play that? Yeah, I played Fear. No, no I that's haven't. A, that's a creepy game. Fear uh, is just really awesome because they had they put so much work into the way bots respond to you in the... Uh, in the universe, it's a, like it was a standout for the fact that the AI had intelligence that was beyond what you'd usually expect. And then, yes, it Even was to creepy this as day, well. Yeah, it's what it's known for. It's a tough game, but I found it very fun, and it was legitimately it had some spooky moments in there. Sometimes the fact that the graphics are of like they're older kind of can add to the scariness of it in a weird way. I don't mm. know if I can describe why. But there's something about old graphics that can make something more scary. Um, maybe I think it's because the lighting is so good in fear. That might be it. It's not afraid to actually be dark, to have sharp contrast between where the light shows, where it doesn't, and the shadows. I'm not sure what I it is. I thought that was one of the most enticing things for us with the Dead Space remake. We were like, oh my god, there's actual like, times we can't dark. see. Actually dark, yeah. Like a flashlight. Well, you need is to use really your important. flashlight for, for real. Otherwise, yeah. you're not going to be able to navigate. Dark, I can't see. What the fuck? Turn on the lights. Ruining Metal's day is one th the one thing that gives me joy in life. Oh. I oh, appreciate geez. that. Yeah. It means he's getting attention, which he loves. That's right. Metal I loves attention. So, yeah. Yeah. The misery is just... A flavor. Well, yeah, sometimes you gotta put up with... This, you know? Sometimes you gotta put up with it. Uh, 14 months of Schlerpo. Keep it up, lads. No problem. Oh, will do. Hello, Chads. Quick question. Have you ca caught up to Shogun? I hope you liked it, and maybe you can have a discussion now that we have the potential for it to become a multi-season story. Have a good one. I have not seen Shogun, but I've heard it's good. Um, no, I meant to continue it, but I never did. And now I've got way too many yeah. things. I've like, I gotta keep up with Penguin right now. Is like my new, currently releasing show that I actually care about. I guess. Uh, what else is there? <laughs> like things that are not good, terrible. Arcade season two. Yeah, it's on the way. Yeah, on the way. Um, there's there's just things generally I'm behind on both film, game, and TV show. So, uh, Shogun's on there somewhere. So, on the, the maybe pile if I can get to it. Uh, guys, why are you talking about YouTube? Acolyte is coming out. Well. <laughs> I mean, it came <laughs> out. And now it's never coming out again. Yeah, it's kind of funny how much uh, history could happen from when, uh, when we finally get to these. It's like, oh, you sweet summer <laughs> super chat. It, it, well, in fact, it's just so much fun news in a way. Uh, do, 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 do. It was my birthday yesterday, and I got painted minifigures of Boromir, Aragorn, and Saruman. Who do I get next? The Hobbits or Gandalf? Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Um, when you, when you, do you get, like, four Hobbits versus Gandalf? Because at that point it is, like, hmm. I would like Sam, Frodo, Merry, and Pippin, but then it is Gandalf, so. Me, personally, I'd probably go for Gandalf. one of the Hobbits. And he grabbed one of the hobbits and swing him around to like fight off the other hobbits trying to get him. What? That's that's like that's what you do if you're attacked by a lot of children. You want to grab one, and then use him to swing around in a circle and then hit all of the other children with that one. Okay. <laughs> how, does that, how does that help this scenario at all? <laughs> It's just important to know. I just was thinking of, I just had the mental image of Gandalf doing it. He'd grab Mary and just spin him around. Well, personally, I'd go with Gandalf. Um, uh, I don't know if either of you have an opinion or not. Are we talking about Rings of Power Gandalf or Lord of the Rings Gandalf? Probably Lord of the Rings. Oh, I and mean, then we're probably going with him. Hmm. All right, I would have thought you two both would have more input, but that's okay. It's totally fine. I'll, uh, I could just, I, I mean, I'll, I'll try and answer further, I guess. The, the, I, I prefer him uh, as a character, I suppose, uh, that I feel like the, the figure itself would probably be bigger and uh, more, more interesting and maybe more pivotal to the collection. That's probably why I would go with it. Um, but uh, at the same time... It's the profile, maybe. The profile of the hat. Did they specify Gandalf the white or gray? No. 
There's something about the Gandalf the Grey look with the big pointy hat, the robe. It's not flashy or anything like that. It just has this particular fantasy kind of profile to it that lends itself well to that kind of a, I got collection aesthetic, you know? Sure. Um, yes, Saruman already, but. They might, Sar- Saruman might meld with Gandalf from a distance a bit, potentially. They look similar, you know, at a distance. But if it was Gandalf the Grey, then you don't, wouldn't have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. But if it was Gandalf the White and Saruman, then maybe at a distance they would look the same, unless you are maybe attempting to complete like a good versus evil kind of, you know, lineup of stuff. I need to do that with like Legos. That they make custom Lego figures of like Star Wars and stuff. That would be a cool thing to get, like some clones over here, some droids over there, maybe some rebel guys over here, stormtrooper guys over there, but in like Lego form. That'd be kind of neat. Long ago, I super chatted something like Doom Guy, Master Chief, and Samus versus the Hulk. And it was quickly dismissed because obviously Hulk wins because he's immortal. But what about with the rules of episode 286? Wait, is Hulk immortal? Um, the problem is, like, if you go through be. all of the comics history for, for Hulk, yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, it shouldn't surprise you too story. much. Like, he's not a character I think people will be satisfied with him dying outright. Like, it feels kind of wrong in the sense yeah, that... Yeah, it seems like, as, as I recall, the only times generally when Hulk dies is if, like, Bruce Banner dies somehow in some way. It's going to be, like, super Hulk. significant usually as well. Um, yeah, exactly. But, you know, mm-hmm. getting shot into space or even into, like, the sun or hit with everything you can imagine, like a nuke or something, it's, they just... No, it's... it'll just be like, no, 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 he's he's fine. There was this other thing that he can do, and now he's all right. <laughs> he's one of those characters where I think fans would prefer to see him survive those things. They don't like watching him die yeah. from those things. And so, unfortunately, um, yeah, even if you get, like, Master Chief and Samus and stuff, they just don't... Well, so like, there's nothing in their arsenal. We can do the three rounds. Final Destination, and with no equipment, he slaughters them. They have no fucking chance. Yeah. Um, I like Doom Guy and forest. everything, but he one punch to all of those characters from the Hulk, and they're fucked. Yes, pretty much. Um, there's nothing that any of them could do. Uh, Not really. But then if you put him in a forest, it's like, well, gives him a little bit of time, but the problem is that if we said that they have their basic equipment, it's like, okay, so that means Master Chief has got, like, a, basically an assault rifle, a couple of frag grenades... Uh, and a pistol. That'd be like his default loadout. Samus would, uh, I guess, it'd just be like the Varia suit. Pretty much. Um, but, but nothing too flashy. And Doom Guy, it'd be like a handful of the first weapons that he collects. So, like a shotgun and a rifle. They can um, annoy the Hulk, yeah. but he's going to kill him. Exactly. Once you, you get don't have to, any like, kill potential on the Hulk. There's nothing they have access to. That you'd need like a Mac gun from the Halo is, to kill him. Is, I wonder because a Doom guy with all of his equipment is like he'd have some crazy shit from hell. So maybe like that would be able to actually do something to well, Hulk. Round three Hulk is where it gets interesting. Animal. All of them at their maximum. I, well, I guess like... I wonder is Hulk com- like is is Hulk able to counter stuff from hell? Is he able to counter like supernatural stuff? Well, so or, the or thing is. is our lack damage. of information might be a bit of a bane here, because like the the best vision of Hulk is probably some crazy That's comic true. version That's where he's true. That's true. I was thinking the cosmic same thing. Hulk or something. I would assume so, that like magical uh, demonic spell kind of stuff would be the way to defeat the Hulk. You couldn't use it. You couldn't use strength. You'd have to use like 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 curses and things of that nature. The thing stuff. is, that I don't I don't know that Hulk is like vulnerable to magic in the same way that Superman is vulnerable to magic. So yeah, I still feel like Hulk. There's probably something but somewhere what, that one master you would have in. over him at that point is if he's in like a ship while the Hulk is on. Oh Earth. yeah, yeah. If he was able to like nuke it from orbit from like the Pillar of Autumn, yeah. then that that might give him a shot. I mean, the detonation of uh, Pillar of Autumn's reactor. Well, and I will say. It's kind of a nifty thing yeah. to think about, but Doom Guy's on the ground giving them updates while Savas is in a ship, and then Master Chief's on, like, a station. Yeah. And they're all trying to coordinate <laughs> killing the Hulk. That'd be pretty funny. But uh, round three is the only time they have a chance, I would say, but by our rules in 286, yeah. that would mean they'd lose anyway. That's right, yeah. Uh, watch that Knuckles show. Dude, there was a scene where Knuckles is telling a Jewish mum how his tribe of uh, echidnas were wiped out. Guess what the mum compares that to? I've heard about that. There's what now? 
the the Knuckles TV show. Did you check that out, Fringy, at all? No, I didn't. I thought you liked Knuckles. Yeah, I like Knuckles. Maybe I'll watch it someday, but I, I didn't see it. Yeah, I, I just heard weird things about it, but I, I've not seen it myself. Ah, uh, right. See, I didn't really hear anything about it, which uh, is not a that's not a good thing either. I would say no, no. Uh, but now um, Paramount has uh, massively reduced what they're doing in terms of uh, television and streaming, right? So, yeah. I'm you saying we won't get a them. Shadow TV show? Uh, maybe we'll get a Shadow TV show. Maybe. Maybe that's on the cards. Maybe maybe they'd expect that that would be more successful. I'm not sure. I mean, it all depends, right, on the success of uh, Sonic 3. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sure hope that Shadow gets a shotgun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he needs to I, get I a want shotgun. some on. like pure emotional rage taken very seriously, but is funny in meta moments, you know. Yes, that's what I want. That's what I want as well. Um, someone should construct a rag soundboard for the EFAPs he isn't present on. Someone should also donate money to gay charities. Um, I am <laughs> present for virtually every EFAP. I've only I've missed very few, and it's. Like a lot of stuff, like, have, like big family vacations have to be happening or something along those lines for me to miss an EFAP. So I don't know if you should do it for someone who isn't on them, uh, who isn't on them more that you might like to see more. You know, not bad as a record for six plus years, eh? I think it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, repeating super chat catch ups. I think the fellas need to catch up on some sleep. Biden's ghost from the future often targets those who lack sleep. Oh my God. Oh my goodness, I don't want Biden's ghost to attack me in my dreams. Yeah, I think I accidentally repeated this on two different catch-ups when we were uh, able to do a big old recording session, which, whoops, but hey, you know, <laughs> the people who sent those questions in, double answers. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Y'all are aware of the twist in Old Boy, right? If not, don't look it up, but if you do know, what are your thoughts on how well it was executed? Have either of you seen Old Boy? No, I have not. I know of the twist, though. I know about it, but... I don't. I, I don't. Anything. I don't know anything about it, so... <laughs> I have, and um, I think, it, from memory, it's pretty good. Um, there's a couple of things that could have happened to have gotten in the way, but I think it's reliable that you wouldn't have expected them to, so to speak. Um, just takes a bit of, bit of planning, you know? I, um, but mm -hmm. I'd have to rewatch it to give more of a, a assessment on that. Uh, 12 hours and no mention of Orson Welles voicing Unicron? Well, in case you didn't know, Orson Welles voiced Unicron. Also, I'm gay. Oh, I didn't know that he voiced Unicron. Neither did I. Hmm. I don't think, uh, I've, I've seen very little Transformers stuff in general, so. Me too. Basically Obviously, the Michael Bay movies. Yeah, I've seen the uh, Michael the Bay Beast movie, the good, the good Transformers stuff, but I haven't seen the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the Beast Wars show when I was young. That's really about it Ooh. Uh, did you know Rayman's species is canonically named thingamajig and Rayman's name comes from ray tracing software used in the first game well, that's neat isn't it I didn't know any of that but that's yeah it's interesting I had no clue Rayman's limbless design comes from my, my, Michael Ansel's Rayman's creator's supposed inability to draw well <laughs> that's fun <laughs> Hey, there you go. I can't draw arms and legs, so he just gets feet and hands. Wow, they around. said Shad might get along with him. Well, did, Yo, did the damn, creator not like fired. drawing limbs, but still like doing faces and hands and feet? Because that's a start, you know? All right, you can start there. Jeez, draw little sticks. savage. Did you know Love Billy Shadow West voiced the titular character Rayman for a short-lived four-episode 3D animated Rayman TV show? Should be on YouTube. I did not know I that. I didn't know that. No, um, I had no clue. Loving all these Rayman it, fun facts. I'm just, I'm just thinking about how, yeah, Rayman started, like, with... Well, wait, no, sorry. Now I'm getting confused. There were 3D Rayman games, but was the first Rayman on PlayStation? That was that was a 2D platformer, right? I don't it would have been... First one. Probably... Oh, gosh, what was it? That's a, That's, like, that was what, like... PlayStation kind of One, kicked right? off Ubisoft, well, didn't like it? I said it was PlayStation One, so I think it was uh, I, I just like I, I think it was a two D platformer. Mm. Um, yes, but it was. there were three D ones, right? But I mean, definitely, definitely two D is uh, kind of 
I mean, obviously, I, I'm speaking to Rayman Origins and Legends, two incredibly underrated, incredibly well-designed 2D platformers that did not sell very well, unfortunately, and thus there was no more Rayman games, but I would, uh, I would certainly like to see Rayman continue in the style of Rayman Origins and Legends. It looks like the first Rayman that came out in 1995 was released for the Atari Jaguar. On PlayStation and stuff, right? Um, no, it only here on the um, Ubisoft made a Rayman a launch title for the PlayStation, but I think this is a different one because I'm looking at the Wikipedia Rayman for Rayman. On Atari Jaguar on the 1st of September 1995, followed shortly by versions for PlayStation, the Sega Saturn, and MS-DOS. So, and it's one of the best-selling PlayStation games. <laughs> so, PlayStation. Because it's not even... Oh, you have to click the show and it expands the list. Okay. That's right, yes. That's, okay. You gotta get more, you gotta get your head around Wikipedia's confusing um, why would user they just... interface. Yeah, why wouldn't they just why just show the list? That's like the important box up there. I need but, you to uh, tell me, tell me your secrets. Yeah, right. I, I like Rayman Origins yeah. and Legends specifically, but uh, there will never be any more because who knows if Ubisoft's even going to make it. Well, I wonder what will happen. Do you think that those titles will go off to other people or other companies or uh, like the depends, rights to right? them? It might be like with THQ where a whole bunch of their uh, intellectual properties got acquired uh, when they collapsed. So, you know, who knows? Well, hell, yeah, maybe hopefully. Ubisoft will actually pull out of the nosedive and return to profitability. Though, uh, I guess that's... It's uh, possible, I guess. It's, but hey, man, uh, Maybe Assassin's Creed Shadows is going to be really good. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Hopefully it gets the... It, hopefully it gets a, a fair chance like all video games do. Like we gave Outlaws a fair chance. A really fair chance. An that was a that was the fair, fair chance. as fuck chance. <laughs> <laughs> Much more fair than it deserved. Most games... And I was I was thinking about this with the um I think it was my second stream where I was only a little bit in and so I was still on Toshara and like nothing had really happened and I was like holy fuck I'd be wrapping up all of Suicide Squad by now like and we're not even close to the credits so to speak so like the amount of chances Outlaws was given Oof. uh farewell and adieu to you fair Flemish massives farewell and adieu to you massives of Fleem oh hey. I think I know who that is. I mean, I think this guy's trying to be fair, but he seems to be what he's critiquing. Hi, Rags. Hello! See, that's how you know this is early in the stream. That, that, that message was very kind. They don't, they're not as kind the more you listen to him. No, but I don't blame him. No. Hey, guys. Oh, asshole. What do you think is the most powerful character in all of fiction, and why is it the Headless Horseman? Well, because he's just so powerful. It's, it's almost like a... In all of fiction? Yeah. Well, well, it's, I mean, it's a good thing that there was a whole EFAP episode on it, right? <laughs> Who did it end up being? Um, it was down to Kirby and Unicron. <laughs> Unicron. Unicron so, was I insane, guess... though. At that point, the yeah, competition so really is just which writer wrote the most and most insane powers for their character, which Unicron was up there. Yeah, I guess something like that. But, um... It's funny because you'd be like, what about Superman? It's like Superman is down a chance when you get to like the craziest fictional creatures. Because Cthulhu didn't even win. Mm -hmm. Neither did Dr. Manhattan. It's tough up there in the, the top. It is. It's a crazy world. I'm talking about working for a living. I'm talking about car parking. All right. Car parking's a job. The valet. Yeah. Be it's one of those for a living. You make some good money. This guy looks like the type of person to call himself a criticalist and distance himself from quote unquote critics. Yeah, probably. He's critical of critics. That's the important distinction that you have to keep in mind. He's not part Definitely. of the riffraff. Um, so we got Critis are raving over my massive penis. Critis are raving over my massive penis. People pay money to have these things read, read out. It's, all right, you know? And it's a good thing that we do. Yes. Uh, I, wouldn't wanna, uh, I wouldn't have wanted to have missed that. That's a good one. The Last of Us Episode 3 is my favorite. Why the hate? I wouldn't say it's my favorite. I thought it was good, though. 
Yep, agreed. I'm trying to think which which was our like favorite from the season. Um, uh, I mean, episode five uh was quite good. Um, that is the one with Kansas storyline. Oh, I like the uh, cannibals one uh, as well. Yeah, that was episode eight. That was uh, yeah, 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 that that was solid finale too. Yeah. I even like episode one, the um, that the yeah. prologue. The prologue was good stuff. I really liked the prologue. There's a lot to to dig about it. We'll see about that season two. <laughs> we shall see. Uh, can the bullying in chat stop, please? You can disagree with someone without insulting them based on their sexual orientation or gender identity. And chat yeah, seems to make no fun, fun, fun of people for everything. So, uh, what you're best to be is a critic who is just a grey blob with a neutral face. People can't get you. You can't be made fun of for being a grey blob. Why do you need to be like the, uh, what were they called in Futurama? Oh, you talking about the neutral people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You gotta be like that. (laughs) Fellas, why is Blood... Blood... Bioshock Infinite Bad? No lies. Hmm. It... There would be... It's very thoroughly bad in many ways. It would be difficult for us to give a comprehensive list. Um, I think that personally, the things that kind of rise to the top for why I hate it so much and why I consider it very bad is probably the massive downgrade in the gameplay mechanics and the moment to moment like combat decision makings that you had even even has uh, had as options. Um, Bioshock 2 um, really expanded a lot of what Bioshock 1 begun. And to see the franchise go from Bioshock to Bioshock 2 and then go to Bioshock Infinite, which just feels like a completely different animal. It, like, a, like, I, it, like and I mean this in an insulting way, but like the Call of Duty-fication of that series from a really interesting shooter into just the most kind of bland... Um, uh, the presentation of, I get it, it's like it became a. I mean, what would be a good way to describe it? It became the sludge of the of the shooter world, when Bioshock was never that. Um, you you know, no more weapon wheel, no more ammo types, severely restricted plasmids, uh, severely restricted like upgrades and tonics that you could have for different builds on the characters. Much more limited environmental interactivity much less interesting enemy types. It was much less fun to play, much less mechanically interesting and rich. It was just a downgrade in basically every way. Um, even everything as much as the, the, the weapon upgrades uh, were a downgrade as well. Um, and there's, I mean, other stuff like the story literally makes no sense to where they give up at the end on trying to have it be coherent. Um, Elizabeth as a Elizabeth as a character is really lame. Um, the world is it doesn't meet its potential for what that world can be. The game's quite frankly a bit cowardly with its storytelling presentation. Um, uh, Matthew Matosis years back made an excellent video on Bioshock Infinite and why it's kind of shit. I'd highly recommend that. It's a really good video. Stands up really well. So delve into that if you seek more. Yeah, not much to add on that for myself. I uh-huh. thought it was a significant downgrade mechanically and narratively and felt like it was chasing the Bioshock dragon. It was like, we want to be that, but we're not going to put as much creative creativity into it as far as I'm concerned. I remember the people just being blown away by Columbia and that's about it. There wasn't a lot of... Uh... God, I remember all the discussions about um, Elizabeth being like the best NPC companion ever. And it was like... Oh. Yeah. Course, Every yeah. once in a while, she throws you ammo. That's the thing. She's not an NPC companion. She is. She's like. Um, she's not present in combat. Yeah, I don't know what you would. It's a. It's a type of companion. They're in lots of games where there's just like a floaty thing or a little creature that follows you around. It's like Nyx, but doesn't kind of? actually exist in any significant way. Can't like. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you know, everybody priced it at the time as being they made escort missions fun. Yeah, like, when it wasn't the escort mission, there's nothing to lose. You can't. Well, people lose. compared it to Ashley, which is just unfair. Ashley is actually someone you have to protect. You have to account for Ashley. 
because she exists in the world. You may not enjoy that aspect, but at the same time, that's what it is, and they have mechanics to match it. Uh, Elizabeth is not that, even though she's supposed yep. to be. Um, someone had sent me a message saying, uh, Fringy, that you said the ending to Bioshock Infinite was amazing. Uh, well, I certainly disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious if you could remember. Was like, it just, was it Rapture that I, I don't know. Or? Uh, wait, what do you mean? Oh, uh, I, I genuinely couldn't tell you. Like, I have no idea. If, like, I, I, I really do not like it. <laughs> so, if I did, I'm not sure why. I could believe it was that. But, like, in a sense of just, it was a really cool payoff sort of thing, but... I mean, I think that, like, the, the whole ending is essentially trying to overload you with, like, so much stuff that seems revelatory and crazy. And, like, that alone as a thing when it's all happening all at once can sort of like almost be overwhelming in a positive way but then it's like once you start you know there's plenty of stuff like this right but then once you start thinking about it, it's like wait hold on wait hold on wait hold on um and then of course it's like as Rags point out that matthew matosis video was is, is like like that's such a compelling video um if, like if you really like that game and in the storytelling i would be surprised like what to see somebody watch that video and go yeah i still like it though or, or, or rather, I still think it's very well made. It's like, hmm, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Happy Pride Month, massives. Love y'all. Oh, that's nice. Hey, you bet. The first clip he showed of mine lacked so much context, I don't even know what he was trying to say by including it. That's every clip in his video. Nobody had any clue what any of them were. You had to go find out for yourself. Oh, yeah, the, the context was very bizarre. As in, it didn't exist <laughs> for yeah. most of them. Even the framing. Sometimes the quote felt like it had nothing to do with what he was even talking about. Yeah, and it was they, they were played in such a way of like, we all know this guy, this idiot, and we know that what was just said was stupid. And you're like, no, I have no idea what the fuck's going on. One of those things, you need to understand that not everybody knows the things you do. Not everybody is aware yeah. Yeah. There are of other the minds information in the that world. you're aware of. Uh, EFAP Gaming, Diet Soda, and Burnout Revenge PS2 when? <laughs> I have to do that at some point. We ha yeah, we'd have to play Burnout Revenge for the PS2. With some diet soda. <laughs> <laughs> nah, some, nah, yeah, high yeah, octane, right. real shit. Code Red Mountain 2. Uh, warning, this dude is a major lefty on Twitter, so be prepared to be called a Nazi for a few weeks or months. We were. Oh, uh, we were. Oh, it works. We know how, we know how it goes. Not Same song, rodeo. different day. <laughs> yeah. We're Nazis, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did he say that? Has it been two minutes? Uh, it, it, it happened pretty fast. Keep up the great work, Mola. I'm sure that was meant for all of us as well. Thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, ja said the Leia flying scene in TLJ made sense. Well, for the, for those, it's been a while. For those who don't it remember, it's been a while. It, it's uh, like a ghost from my past. It makes no fucking sense at all because she should be dead. That's uh, she would have died in yeah, several different she was ways. In space. Yes, she would have like simultaneously snap froze, boiled. Uh, depressurized and mm -hmm. suffocated. <laughs> like it's it was horrendous. It would have killed really you. Awful. And why? There are many ways. I remember at the time when they blew up the bridge and she fought. I was legit like they just killed Leia, like just like that. And I remember thinking about it as like a really, really bold choice that you would never have expected them to do, uh, especially because Kylo fires the uh, the shots. But then you have the scene, and I, I, what can I say? It's, it's just so funny. It was at the time in my, the first video of mine that went anywhere. I had, uh, it was Alex's laughing. I think it was just couldn't fucking believe what he was seeing. And I was like, yeah, most people could. They don't know what the fuck is going on. She's like flying through space. It goes against everything like, you understand. You like the space witch just pulls out her arm and flies towards the ship, Ugh. comes back in. There's even the ice crystals on her face and everything. As if to imply, like, ah, oh, see, it was tough, but she did it. And you're like, no, I don't think so. Did she have any repercussions? Or she was, was it in, that she was fine after that? She went into like a just... partial coma and then she was fine. Okay, well. Uh, oh boy! Instead, that was the scene where they unceremoniously killed Admiral Akbar. He just—that's where he God, died. Yeah. Yep. Ugh. He's just gone. 
Bye. Has he argued that the Cenobites from Hellraiser aren't evil because they're not human, so you can't be judging them by human morality? Watch what, me, uh, bitch. That's what we do when we say things are evil. We're judging them by human morality, of course. Unless, of course, you're referring to they're more like animals. They don't have any sense of... But no, because like they definitely make decisions, the Cenobites. No, any normal person would consider the Cenobites evil, absolutely. Uh, just because they have a different point of view on life does not make them not evil. From a certain um, point of view, the Cenobites are good. Opening the box is tantamount to consenting to torture by them. That's probably another reason why someone would consider them evil. Because if I have a box and I put it in a room... And then Rags, you stumble in and open the box. Then I go, right, that means I get to torture you now. And I'm free of moral culpability. <laughs> I feel like you'd be like, uh, no, actually. I don't think so. Interesting little thing you got going there, but no. Uh, go back 20 seconds, he literally saying that. Not sure what that's referring to, but fair enough. I studied literary vibes at uni. No bully metal. Not a Literary metal. vibes? <laughs> you always bully metal. You gotta let us bully a little bit. Uh, title theme is best, especially if also in the dialogue. Um, alright. Yeah. Alright. Almost missed the stream due to moving boulders. Also high rags. Oh, hello! I can't tell you how many streams I've missed from boulder moving. Uh, More than I could possibly count. Yeah, there's just... Boulders are interesting creatures. They just get around and you gotta... Got to brush them away, move them away, depending on how hard they're. There's a lot. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot. A lot more than I thought there'd be. How did Batman get to Gotham when he had nothing to his name? It happened off screen, so it's not a plot hole. Bill Trick Baghems. It's interesting how that and one just always comes up over and over again when Dark Knight Rises, that's like one of the many, 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 many problems that film has. Like if you had a. A list. I don't even know where it would rank exactly, but... Man, do you remember all the way back at Plot Holes Don't Matter? Remember that? I do, yeah. Old Patrick Willems. Good times. Classic. You almost <laughs> want to, like, do a retro recover of a, of a video like that someday. That would if... be interesting to see how we've changed, because it has been a while. You fucking said that Alien has a plot hole because they don't account for the acid going through the ship. Do you remember that? When they literally do. <laughs> when they literally do. It's the most like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about, man? Did you, you didn't watch the movie again before you referenced it in your video, did you? Remember what you he was like? Um, you didn't watch the scene? It's on YouTube. It's a clip. You can just watch it. He's like, the first thing I want to do is list plot holes that I, like people, what people call plot holes when they aren't uh, plot holes. And one of the sections was just when people are wrong. I was like, well, well yeah. Uh,. So you're saying you have chrisms of this video? Yes. Lots of chrisms. A shilling for plot holes and feelings. If you don't have a piece Thank of paper uh, with a degree, how can I trust your reviews and critique? What if I simply claim I have one? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a well, good you just, point. You just write one down and cry on. You do yeah. that? You just the go great, on the internet the and tell lies? Correct. <laughs> I just have a piece of paper that has a tick on it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plot is easy to talk about, unlike cinematography. Did he just shit on the entire medium of writing? I guess books are low media to him. Oh, that That's totally something. That's that not even close to a hot take from someone like him. I would expect that from all people like him. Plot discussions? That's such lowbrow crap. To talk about the composition of a scene is automatically more meaningful than anything you could say about any plot line. No matter how many characters or thematic through lines are weaved through, it doesn't matter. Plot plot is lame. No one should like plot. It is the same thing you get with a lot of these discussions where it's the... Um, they're very, very quick to completely like tear down and... Um, what's the word? To make lesser. To... Degrade? To denigrate... Yeah, to, to denigrate or degrade the thing that they kind of have devoted themselves to. You see this with the, the Star Wars was always stupid. Blah, blah, blah was always stupid. People will do it instantly. Um, mm. Like it's a like this just it just comes naturally to them. And it, it really is weird to see. You think people would be more reasonably defensive of the craft that they've devoted their livelihoods or 
great interests in. Well, to be fair, he but... would be like, I'm not shit on writing, I'm just shit on plot analysis, because the plot is the least important thing of a story, and you'd be like, uh... Uh, alright. No, it's like, most things rest it's on the, it. I mean, that, that's the story, but, okay. Uh, um... Boop, boop. This guy's already celebrating on Twitter that he knew Mola couldn't resist the bait. Yeah, you're sticking it to the chuds, buddy. I've always loved that one. It's like... Oh, you success... I was pretending to be retarded? Like, yeah, like, uh, what? I was retarded it's such that you would call me retarded, and now you have. And you're like, alright. We converted your <laughs> video into our livelihood. I, you really showed us, man. Well, I, I mean, it you creates really, really, really great discussions. Us. Always benefit from a horrible example. And even if you're like, ah, it was all a joke, you're like, alright. It's still okay, same meaning. Okay. Uh, why is it wrong for him giving a plot summary of the movie? Not everyone has seen a forty-year-old movie. I can't remember if this because is because that's all it was. I think it was. Yeah, yeah it wasn't. Yeah, like, yeah, this is about the Blade Runner. Yeah, offering, like, Blade Runner as an analysis, and all he did was like describe the events of the film and like the most basic. Well, most, he like, fucking just analysis. said the line, and then he was like, "There, analysis." Yeah. Like, no, that was the point. Yeah. It's it's just like it wasn't an analysis, but it was being presented as analysis. It was just describing what happened. Funnily enough, it's a thing that people often say that Mola does, right? It's like, oh, he just describes the film. He's not actually like doing analysis. And then you lo and behold, you watch somebody do exactly that. Oh, it was kind of uncanny, because yeah, he's one of the many people who would absolutely look down on us. And I think he does it in the video, right? He talks about like Blade Runner is Almost like this. It's like a litmus test of being able to talk about meaningful things, and then he can barely scratch into anything meaningful that wasn't already presented to him on a platter. Yeah. Well, it just feels like that's kind of a thing that happens now, right? Where people almost accrue a list of films that they've seen, but, like, they're not really getting much out of it. Almost like, you know, somebody just sort of plowing through a bunch of books, but they didn't, like, get anything from any of them. But it's like, well, you've, you've seen a lot of movies, but you haven't even managed to absorb, like, a lot of the most basic fundamental meaning from them. To which you gotta wonder what's the point. We see this with people who play games a whole lot for a living, but they can't say anything meaningful about a game yeah. experience, what the mechanics are, the plot story. Has played maybe a few games or watched a few movies, but could tell you everything there is to know about them. Has like a deep understanding of them. But, but. Behold, my awesome 33-month milestone. Behold! Wow. Oh, hey, that's awesome. That really is awesome, man. Yeah. You've had movies, Sharknado arc, when? I could see us doing it. I don't mm. know when, though. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, didn't you criticize Cinema Sins in The Last Wish about why doesn't Puss just beat death as he has him cornered? Also, there is a video of the Bob vids on Cinema Sins. Why doesn't... Puss just beat death as he has him cornered. Is that something that we said or something CinemaSin said? It's definitely not something that we would have said. I would have said this doesn't sound like something we would say. No. Yeah, I don't think we would have ever mentioned that Puss can just, like, decide I'm going to beat death now. It was something yeah, that was like the right? whole point of the whole story was learning how to do that. He can't beat him. He could just fend him off. But he can't beat him. But, like, him. beating him it's wasn't death. the point either. It was a change of nature. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what prompts death to leave him alone <laughs> for now, basically. Well, because death is there to kill a particular yeah. person, that person isn't there. It's gone, exactly. God, I love that movie. Yep. Excellent movie. Mola, <laughs> uh, Mola, please, tell me you hired this guy to give us an out-of-season Goodell. All of this is wrong in so many ways, <laughs> trying to understand it has me looking up <laughs> for Pepe Silva. <laughs> out-of-season uh... Goodell. <laughs> Goodell's been retired, and you know what? It, it's just, it's splattered into the world. Goodell's are everywhere, living Goodell's. Find them all. Like them, like Pokemon. Uh, this video is a self-report that he passes opinions through the consensus filter that doesn't form opinions independent of other people's approval. Yeah, uh, there is that. It is definitely a result of living in a particular kind of bubble. I really do feel like we look into all kinds of bubbles. And we're like, hey, look at that bubble, and then take our heads back out, and then look into a different mm -hmm. one. And um, we've come across that kind of one several times. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, sweet motherfucking crispy critters, this guy's insufferable. He can't beat a straw man he erected. He can't beat Anita. This is so sad. Yeah, do you remember that when you fucked up going oh, after Anita? Oh, yeah, that was really fascinating. That was on. That was fascinating. That was the most fascinating part of the video. Yeah, we were all very... It's so weird when someone is trying to make a point that we disagree with, and then they use evidence from something completely different. We're like, you fucked that up too? Or, or vice mm -hmm. versa, where it's something we agree with, but their uh, their workings are all fucked. Mm -hmm. How did you manage that? Lily's hyper bad faith unironically def identifies as a Sith, but her criticisms of Steven Universe are pretty solid. Out of line, but not wrong in this case. She's anarcho-socialist, not right-wing, lol. We don't know much about Lily. Uh, Lily I, Orchard, I know right? about the Sith thing. About her fucking mega cringe OC Sith Jedi person. Do you know about yeah, this? I'm just I guess it's just like, I'm, what? It sounds, like, it sounds familiar. I, I'm pretty sure I, I know think, about this. If, I think if you saw the video, it might come back, but she has a, a like the most giga cringe OC Star Wars Jedi character. And she's like an evil Sith, but she does it for justice. So she has like the, um, <laughs> like she kills people and tries to justify, and then she justifies it. Of course, you'd you'd okay. remember it if you if you heard the video. It would all sound familiar. You, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, super random, but I'd love to see an EFAB Gaming Corp campaign of Baldur's Gate Three. Very long game, but even still, would be cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that would ever be happening with how long it is, though. It that would be, would, that's a huge investment in, like, time and attention and stuff like that. It would be entertained if we could even play short games. We, we're still trying to work <laughs> on that, okay? Like, if we could yeah. get that going, <laughs> maybe someday. My favorite JC Denton meme is apt for how to respond to this video. Chew, chew you have is faction a singalicious satisfact to snack that up. All right. Like, why doesn't he take the time to explain anything he's saying? That'll be that'll make you have a long video. You don't want that. Why not? Why not just? Yeah. Why do that when you can just sit in front of your webcam and? It's also yeah, like crank one out in an hour. It's kind of beneficial to have the sh clips be shorter and lesser context because you can just you can tell everyone what it's about. Because uh, a lot of people aren't willing to go and search them up. Did we actually, like, go out of the videos to go and find context? Or I think we just opted for, like, I don't believe you. Well, that's what we went with. I mean, yeah, um, after a long time, it's just a case of I can't really make, like, I can't make real judgments about what I'm seeing here because so much of the context has been omitted and I don't trust you. Yeah, so, yeah once you kind yeah. of, you, you do get to that tipping point where you've proven to be a liar over and over and you're super bad faith. And so it's like, man, I just... It's not, there's no point. I'm not going to waste, take that, um, time out of my day to try and fact check everything you say. I'm just going to assume it's a lie because you've proven yourself to be a liar. You do the work, not me. It's your video. Yeah. Uh, hi, guys. I'm like an hour or two behind, and I do find something amusing about a guy being upset that someone called Devil is supposedly dishonest. Well, I mean. He's not actually a devil. Yeah, he's, he's having right? a bit of fun. No, I don't think so. But. <laughs> Uh, the the idea that you'd expect a, a YouTuber called something devil to be dishonest, I'm like, well, no, he's just, I think he's got it for the cool factor, but, uh, yeah, he went after him for the Mary Sue stuff, I think. Yeah, but it was a fine video, the literature devil all stuff. All that we got, we, we got all, so yeah. little, but from what we saw, we were like, this seems coherent. Yeah, seems all right. Seems pretty well-reasoned, the literature devil excerpts that he chose, that he chose, that mm -hmm. Amuglio Anthony chose. Not good examples, because we were agreeing with Literature Devil. What he just said was a goddamn blank plot summary. What are we talking yep. about? Uh, Blade, Blade Runner. Runner. Yeah. Uh, plot is the bedrock of the story, regardless of medium, since plot is just events that occur due to character actions. So why is it wrong to start your criticism from the bedrock of the story? Um, because generally it's more than a bedrock. This I think is it's... The, this is the summary. Here is the analysis. That's what comes afterwards, is the analysis of what was just described. I think a lot of people get this in their head that, like, once you've figured out what the author was going for, it no longer matters how well executed the bedrock is. Like, like that's just the answer to the puzzle? Yeah, like the... Once I know what the author said, I'm done. Like, like Puss in Boots, I think a lot of people wouldn't, as we saw, appreciate the writing in it, because they instead skip to the commentary on death and stuff. 
And then they, and you'd be like, yeah, but look how well they set this up. I could see them being like, this is a fucking plot. Who cares? Like, oh yeah, this scene connects to this scene. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, like, but, but like, or they take it for granted. Yeah, and they say, yeah, of course the plots connect, and it's like, dude, that's like rare these days. Yeah, it's rare to get it that strong. That's why it was a standout. Um, this all upsets me considering how much work I put into combine logical consistency and emotional value. Appreciate all the work y'all do. Keep it up. Well, hey, oh, we'll do. Thanks, man. That kind of captures our primary thing in a way. We're, uh, we want that emotional resonance, and we want that logical consistency. Give us yep. both. Nom, nom, nom. We want it to be earned. I want the things that I feel to be earned. This whole video can be summed up with, Stop disliking what I like, which conveniently is whatever agrees with his politics. Play Trails in the Sky. Trails in the Sky. Maybe, maybe. Perhaps. Uh, but yeah, the, that is often the case. With the, because the it's a much more intuitive and defendable position to say stop, like hating on me for enjoying a thing, but the opposite exists. Stop hating on me for not enjoying a thing. I should be allowed to. EFAP doesn't realize they're massives. Oh, we know. Oh, we know. We've known for years. <laughs> I've seen things you flames wouldn't believe. Metal's balls on fire off the shoulder of Schlerpo. Oh, I watched no. flute beams glitter. Oh, well, that, yeah, I mean, flute I would have, beams glitter. I would have loved to have seen those things, but I can only dream. There is interstellar travel. The movie Solida is supposed to be in the same universe, and there is interstellar travel in that movie. If we're going strictly from Blade Runner 1, though, I, I don't think there was any reference to interstellar travel, so I get the, uh, the inquiry. Um, like a, like an explicit reference, but I think there's a lot you can conclude, is what I'm saying. Um, mm -hmm. I have no point to contribute, just wanted to check if chat reacts with gay to this too or not. Cheers, guys, this is entertaining. I'm glad to oh, entertain. Very glad that you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative as well. Uh, happy Dinosaur Pride Month, which is your favorite dino? Oh... Oh, I'm sure. I know we, we have definitely answered this before. The problem is I can't remember what my answer was. Mine's spoken for. It's T-Rex. And <laughs> the, the runner-up is Raptor. They're just too cool. Yeah, I feel like I've answered this before, but now I can't remember what I would have said. Gosh, what would my answer be? He'd probably be a little goober. Um, may... What? Gosh, what once come to mind? I mean, um, I like Brontosaurus. I like them. They got. I, I like them. They. They. I don't know. They always feel like kind of goofy, happy <laughs> dinos. You know. Um. Oh gosh. What about? What about the ones that have like the the dome on their head? Like they have like a big, like a big big, like like a bone dome on their head. Is it an ankle? Plesaurus. No, those are cool though. They have like the they're they're like spiny and they have the big club tail. Those yeah, are pretty club cool. cool. Yeah, that's those Ankylosaurus is up there. Um uh, but I dinosaur with bone head. The Pachycephalosaurus. He's a cool guy. He's got that big bony, you know, head thing on the top. I like him. He's pretty neat. Kind of right. kind of unique. There's two that I like. I don't know if I have a favorite, though. Well, there we are. YouTube is a liar sometimes. What? Yeah, sometimes. Hmm. That's how you know he's good. He's not engaging. <laughs> showmanship is separate, but can assist in criticism. Hell, that's half of what makes politics politics, is the showmanship of it. Even the statement is false. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a big part of YouTubing. Anybody who's learning to be a YouTuber, they need to be made aware that that's a part of it. Uh, presentation, so to speak. But um, the thing is, I, I guess you'd say this applies to politics fairly as well, but, like, there's so many different kinds of presentation just communication. for communication. Well, like, what, what I was going to say is just that you can have the, you know, like, nostalgia critic versus someone like Matthew Matosis. It's like both of them have a form of presentation. And you could uh, 
you could opt for which one you think is yeah. more successful or more suitable. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, I would prefer it if Matthew Matosis presented himself like Nostalgia Critic. With his funny skits and the voice and, <laughs> and the screaming. Oh yeah, that would make that would make <laughs> the screaming. <laughs> I love that with the as we all do. the uh, the OD team when they do a nostalgia critic shit. They just always throw screams in randomly. <laughs> just what he does, man. Um, he's a cool guy. This dude cannot reconcile the part of critique that's rooted in knowledge of the medium, genre, etc., and the part that is entertainment. It plays into like the uh, the denigration of objectivity as a. We we covered this actually recently in that uh, Alana Pierce uh, video, the seven out of ten thing, the oh the shill defense, um, like the idea that you could have a review of something that's objective is like they they can't even entertain it they ca they can't fathom the idea that you're just using facts and knowledge you know and these to... people they're the kind that when you say something along the lines of okay you see that thermometer and they're like yeah and you go if i was to read the temperature of the room to you would that be objective i feel like if you said that to them they'd be like hmm and they'd sit there for a while because they don't want to say yes Do I want to open this can yeah, of like, worms it, that destroys everything that I've been you, saying? You're like, baby step? Baby step? <laughs> it's like, yeah. we're just going to go with that first, okay? No one's going to get hurt. It's going to be fine. Um, knows you're covering him, proceeds to rather argue with me on Twitter instead. Pathetic coward said, never known a debate to change minds. Oh, well, they do. Uh, oh, they absolutely do. Debates change minds. Absolutely mind. they do. Speaking of someone that's who's had his mind like changed by many that's debates. A, <laughs> that's a I don't know, that's the kind of thing that someone says, like, ah, yes, big brain. That feels like a, ah, see, I've transcended your feeble minds and your understanding of how the world works. <laughs> well, isn't you it know, just a like, bad sign? Kind of I've like, never had my mind changed by a debate. It's like, oh. Yeah, I mean, it oh, feels so like it's a lot more about you than everybody else. I don't know. I feel like it's the um, it's that bell curve, right? The whole, you know, like the dumb guy and then the 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 screeching guy and then the guy in the cloak. You yeah. know what I'm yeah, talking about? Right? Yeah, the bell yeah, curve oh, yeah, thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Of like debates change minds to like, well, actually, this and this and this and that, and then back to debates change minds. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. I've had my mind changed too much by um, good debates and having information presented and counters to things it's just like man well what i will change your mind if not debate i like it when an idea gets to be openly challenged immediately and like sort of i think about it some way you know this is the best version of debates not not all debates when you can have it like hammered into a better rendered position because any little bits and bobs that seem like oh, i wish i could ask about that can often get answered um compared to mm -hmm. a video that is you know, I'm 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 arguing right now the best versus the worst of the, each thing because because like you know like a video essay style where they bombard with so much information and no alternate point of view. Yeah, you can't digest it properly. Or that you just sit there thinking like, yeah, but what about blah blah blah? And it's like, well, that's never going to come up because that's not what they're doing. You sort mm. of. Yeah. Um, so you know, good faith, interested in reaching truth debates. I'm totally on on board with for changing minds. However, yeah, even with them, like, there's an entertainment factor, and a lot of people watch debates not to change their mind, but to just see uh, blood spilled, basically. <laughs> yeah. I grew up surrounded by farms. Mm. Well, you're going to say I grew up surrounded by debates. And I'm like, good. Yeah, you should be a well-rounded individual with you know, well, look at this healthy quote. worldview. Um, humans are distasteful to me. <laughs> they said that's a quote from Zod's neck. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you have to take it from, Zod's snap yeah. neck. Tell that to Zod's snap neck. And engage in a conversation with him. Uh, this is indeed a bad media criticism essay. Yeah. What do you think that's a reference sure. to, Fringy? Um... I'm guessing I should know, but it's eluding me at this point. If I say it again, maybe I can get closer to how it sounds. Yeah, uh, try, try again. 
this is indeed a bad medium. Oh, this is a bad say. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Treehouse of Horror. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the Treehouse of Horror five. The James L. The Jones, time right? Story. Yeah, I think so. He's voicing Maggie, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> right after she killed <laughs> Willie. Right after she killed Groundskeeper Willie with an axe. <laughs> oh, that's the one that's like the usual one I go to for best Treehouse of Horror. It's that's so fucking be- good. Yeah, that's the best Treehouse of Horror. It's got the Shining one, and then that one, and then the Nightmare Cafeteria, and the oh, running so gag good. of Groundskeeper Willie just getting killed with an axe. <laughs> We should, uh, cause like there's the other one they're making fun of is the, um, uh, the Twilight Zone episode, right? The, the It's People thing. Oh, uh, people, but with the kids. Or is, I remember or is, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. I think it's close to it, but, um, just the joke where they're, they're trying to rescue whoever or do whatever, and then they, they catch Edna's reading a book called The Joy of Cooking Millhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you remember the, the part where it's like they're going past the, the, the room where like all of the children are being held in cages and then um and then and then Skinner's like now for the free range children and yeah. he just looks out the window and it's a bunch of kids just running around in a field flapping their arms <laughs> like <laughs> their chickens. Because <laughs> they all start getting fat, don't they, all the teachers? Yes, they all start getting really, really fat. Oh man, because that's 20 minutes, and there's three full-on stories that are great and funny as fuck. Yeah, I mean, of course, you... <laughs> here's Johnny! Do oh, David Letterman! <laughs> Hi, David, I'm Grandpa! Don't! <laughs> uh, it's so good, and then the, the <laughs> just watching TV, urge to kill, fading, 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 rising! <laughs> Fading. God. Oh. oh, it's so good. Um, family, sit in the snow with Daddy and let us all bask in television's warm, glowing, warming glow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I freeze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Change the channel. Kid frozen. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Earth to kill. Rising. I'm sure all of this makes sense to you, Rex. I mean, it sounds funny to me. <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, it, it is the best. It probably is the best Treehouse of Horror uh, episode, which puts it in the running for best episode of Simpsons, but probably not the best episode. Of Simpsons. Still, uh, close. It's 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 in the running. I would say for the best episode of the Simpsons, but yeah. Cape Fear, like it's just it's it's uh it's it's a really 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 excellent episode of The Simpsons. Gollum could argue circles around this guy. True. Gollum was quite the arguer. Mm. God, they made a whole game about it. It was crazy. I heard this guy likes mudkips. I don't what, think like there's anything wrong with yeah. There's nothing wrong with liking <laughs> mudkips, right? Am I out of the loop on our mud mudkips are all right, aren't they? <laughs> there was there a meeting? Oh no! <laughs> Have we did someone decide that mudkips are not acceptable to like? Are they one of the Pokemon? You're just that's like no, that's one of the bad ones. The demon Pokemon. I don't think so, right? People I like mudkips, don't they? I yeah, it seems like he's an okay guy. I like him. I don't like him as much as Squirtle. Uh... Well, Totodile, but I like him. Yeah, Squirtle and Totodile are top tier. Top tier, top tier Pokemon, for top sure. Top tier, yeah. yeah. I got three, um, I need to get a case for them all, but I got um, three for alligators. Uh, of the, the... I, oh, by the way, did you know that uh, Fringy, without looking, can you spell for alligator in the Discord no, there? I definitely cannot. No, not even going to give a stab at it, for alligator? There's one thing I remember about it. Hang on, I'll try. Is is it that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, there is oh, no O. There's no O okay. between the T and the R at the end. It's oh wow, that's ends. very Norse, isn't it? For alligator. Cool. He's one of my favorites. I really like the the Gen Two Pokemon, especially the starters. Really high tier. I really really like him. 
But we we uh, we yeah, did that in the super chat catch up once. We went yeah. through a bunch of the starters. We had a low mm-hmm. point in the middle, but then they started a right. peak a peak again. They started. A yeah, rise it was like again. by the time that we were getting to generation five and six, that was the that was when that was starting to get like really horrendous. Yeah, there was a couple of good ones here and there in that middle chunk, but then luckily yeah. it started to improve. I feel like they found their footing again. Mm-hmm. I'm glad Theo is back and two weeks in a row. How you spoil us. You got, you got some got some Theo injections. And you got Theo's own Elden Ring DLC video came out. Oh. The controversies to follow. Who knows what Theo will say is bad next. <laughs> Who knows? Stay tuned. <laughs> you dumbos are lying to us? I knew all along you actually loved the Fallout show, but lied about it being bad because you think it's woke. Play DDLC. Just thought it was oh. really shitty, you know? Fallout's bad because it it's bad. Yeah, it doesn't need any help from any of that. It's just think, really bad. What's the how are you guys feeling? What's the plan for season two of Fallout? Are we completely avoiding it, like the plague, or what? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I have basically no interest. Uh, I don't have it, any interest myself. If everyone, maybe it will depend on what people say about it. If everyone says, "Wow, hmm. this is so good and amazing," but. It's going to amuse me so fucking much if people don't like season two and they start saying things as to why it's bad that apply to season one. Mm. Be like, mm. <laughs> yeah, it's this is be. almost way better because blah 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 blah, blah 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 blah. We'll see, we'll see, guys. I was just in in inducted to the straight white Inducted? guy's name, Albert Hall of Fame. You me, English is hard, man. English is difficult. We really appreciate your patronage. Yes. Um, I wish I knew what to comment on. I give you a thumbs up. Good job on your induction into the thing that you got into. Yeah. I hope you have a good time and things go well. I hope you make a lot of friends. And I hope your Pinewood Derby car is the fastest. Remember, even broken clocks are right twice a day. That's true. They are. Even though there's, that's going to become a saying that people won't understand soon enough. Even a broken record. Twi- no. <laughs> Mola finally exposed. Yeah, it was going to happen at some point. It's all Oga now. Why must you destroy our themes, long man? <laughs> Hi, Rags. Hello. I like themes, though. They're, they're neat. Themes are neat. We like themes. EFAP is a pro themes production. Pro themes. Uh, why does he look like a more pathetic Spoonie? More pathetic? Well, I haven't actually got an update on Spoonie these days. I don't know if there's uh, significant changes, but... I think it's been rough. Yeah, it's been rough. Lord of... Oh, wait, I read that. No, I didn't. Lord of Ring Gollum has more polish than this video. Whoa. Probably. You guys found a banger with this one. This is the start of the whole, in ten years, everyone is going to love the sequel trilogy thing. Also, high rags. Hello. Well, Turns I mean, out, I mean, the well, basically, it has I mean, the exact got... same reputation as it did fucking week one or whatever. Well, you know what I mean? Worse. Like, worse, probably. Yeah. It's got worse. The Force Awakens was beloved when it came out. That's true. Out, um, and now. Well, um... and, and the, the people in favor of this stuff, they've moved on. Because there's nothing to be passionate about. Those films suck. Yeah. Disney's basically given up on them. them. So amusing to me because we're three years off TLJ being ten years old. And when it is, you'll get loads of TLJ 10 years on videos, probably, just because that's a thing people do 10 years on. Um, but, like, what's going to be said that changes anything? The, 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 the stalwart narrative for one side is that it destroyed Star Wars, which you can actually prove, like, in terms of its engagement, its numbers, how the communities have been split up, what Disney did as a result of the reaction to it. You know, all these like tangible things versus the other side they're gonna say like it revolutionized and uh, brought new life to Star Wars or something it's like what's your argument to be that you liked it one of the things that it gets really hard to deny um, because it scared the hell out of Disney the reaction to TLJ and Solo and then of course mm-hmm. Tross as well but I feel like it was already it was already happening by then well, yeah, nobody was really optimistic or excited about Tross. No. Everybody kind of expected it to be a piece of shit. Oh, yeah, that was that thing came out, and everyone was ready to be like, ooh. 
I'll never forget Patrick Willems. Well, Fuck you, happen. J.J. Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Funny. Uh, you guys just need to accept that Rey is the greatest, most bestest Jedi to ever live. She's all the Jedi, lol. Yeah, she Jedi. is super uh, cool. You yeah, know, she's cool. It's just I just don't I don't even think any of that actually happened. That was just all some crazy dream. Oh, there was a time where I was worrying that I wouldn't be able to, in my mind, separate the the the, the original trilogy and the prequels and all the other proper Star Wars stuff from Disney's <laughs> bullshit, but. I gotta be honest, it's really easy now to separate those two yeah. things. It's also interesting it to me. It's really easy. As someone who didn't play Jedi, Fallen Order, or Survivor to any significant degree, uh, nor did I play the Battlefront remakes, it's really interesting to me to see Outlaws as more of Disney's canon. You know, like both the story being shit as it is, but also mechanically. Like that's what they have to yeah. give us. And I'm just like, yep, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. That's oh, in line with it, everything else. It belongs in Disney's. Um, yeah. Stewardship. <laughs> it's a very perfect addition to their collection. Uh, hello, EFAP. Thoughts on Trump being found guilty by a, quote, stop Trump judge who donates to Biden campaign. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. If... But did that happen in a movie? We're going to be we're happy to answer questions about movies. <laughs> if it's, if it was, uh, don't know about that one. Uh... La la la, I'm not listening to the facts. I'm right, and you're all liars. La la la, that's all I hear from this guy. A little bit. That's a lot of video essays, to be honest with you. Yeah. I have about three or so videos going over Ray and Mary Sue's. A lot more than these few seconds he showed, lol. Oh, that would be from, um... Literature Devil. Literature which, Devil. Yeah, like I told you, though, like it was mentioned, what we saw was not, like cringe it was defensible and solid like it's it was a really bad context to choose and i th it's as we said most of the video relies on you agreeing with him already not exactly that it convince anybody of anything oh yeah you could tell by its construction look at this little clip you hate this guy right it's like a greatest Me hits too, of we on. hate all of these people and i'm right it's like, okay. kind of yeah um Lie to me, Mauler. Hit me with that sweet dopamine. Um, oh. We're only going to have good movies released from now on. Woohoo! Oh, All right. God. But mm -hmm. that means we'll be out of a job. <laughs> we can talk about good movies. No, we can never talk about things we like. Oh, that's we, true. We're just we're hate mongers of the toxic brood, not love mongers of the happy brood. Damn it. Elm Street 3 was awesome. <laughs> it actually was. I hope everyone enjoyed the preview. Like Street, <laughs> However many months ago that was. Yes. Uh, this is what happens when a, when a polygon writer tries to become a YouTuber. Oh, Ooh, no. yeah. That's an apt... Uh... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he did write for Polygon. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, we all come from... Well, somewhere. Alana Pierce, <laughs> she wrote for IGN for three years. and That well... just explained the video <laughs> in terms of like, oh, of course you would have these opinions. Yeah, oh, that yeah. makes sense. That's... It's all coming together. I believe you. Uh, thanks, guys. I've enjoyed laughing at this while I was painting. And as always, thanks for the hours of entertainment. No oh, problem. Oh, you bet. I hope your painting goes good. Yeah. I will say this. I, I don't have much experience with painting other than like uh, I have a little bit of experience like painting like shutters cone. and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like when it comes to like actual like canvas brush stuff, I I just I can't get it down. Watercolor in particular, when I was growing up and we would have like art classes and things. I could never get watercolor down. I, the, the colors were going everywhere. It was an uncontrolled mess. I don't know how people do it. There's a lot of... Oh, I just could not do it. It's wild. Hmm. If they take quotes out of context, operative word being they... Yeah, I think at one point he talks about the very thing he's doing throughout the whole video. Um, like as if everyone else would do it or something. I remember us being pretty flawed by it. It was it, The video had everything in it in terms of... Oh, fuck up. It was a smorgasbord. It really was. It was very thorough. Um, it always leads back to Gamergate. Yep, the it's the canon event of our universe. Apparently, <laughs> just there it is again, popping up. Uh, I think that clip is from Eric July's video about how Professor X versus Magneto is not an al analogy for MLK Jr. versus Malcolm X. In brackets, it's good. I recommend it. Yeah, I think like the original inception of the characters, right? But the uh, certain stories have been written with that intention for them. 
At least that, that I don't want to make any claims because I'm really not a comic guy. Just stuff I've picked up through osmosis. I'm tired of Disney Star Wars characters. Can we talk about good Star Wars characters? What about Qui-Gon? I like Qui-Gon. I wish Obi-Wan had healed him. Hmm. Uh, is Qui-Gon a good Star Wars character? There's some... I think the idealized version, like, clearly what was being go gone for, I'd say it was pretty and strong. execution. Yeah, the, the, I'd have to rewatch Phantom Menace again to give more of an assessment of what I think we got of him, but... I totally understand the character that they're going for, and uh, it would be mm -hmm. really awesome to see more of him. Like, yep. um, well, we did see more of him. What are you talking about? Do you know I'm watching yeah. that scene in my head right now, and it, I've just finished. <laughs> <laughs> you had to remember that it exists and it's a real thing, and that, and that it's they, three seconds they got long. Right? It's three seconds and. You remember how we were speculating, like, oh, this is the part where he's gonna, Qui Gon's gonna show up. Oh, this is the part where Qui Gon's gonna show up and talk to him, and they're finally gonna have our big Liam Neeson scene, and it never happened, and it was just three seconds at the end. Holy yeah, fuck! What great. an insane waste. Yeah, and they could have done Not anything they wanted because like Liam Neeson is that. like famously happy to play uh, Qui Gon. He likes playing him. They got him for the full makeup and outfit, and then they had him do that. For Unbelievable! Unfucking believable. Agree. It's unfair too because you know if if we had full control, I'd be like, "Oh shit, we're we're flashing out Obi Wan and Qui Gon. We're getting we're getting so much shit here. We're gonna talk about the Jedi Council and the history of the Jedi and the Republic and all those all the stuff that they desperately need to talk about and they never do. Talking about the difference between if if like imagine a fucking full on argument about how Obi Wan did fail to train Anakin properly. Yeah, that'd be interesting, oh, but oh well. But oh well. Never gonna happen. And like, he got so angry, the Force Ghost Qui-Gon, that he like starts to fade away, because like, he can't, he's not focusing on, you know, communication at that point, he's just so angry. You mm. can even explore the mechanics of the Force Ghost a little bit, you know, further yep. than not making them fucking shoot lightning. Shoot lightning, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh. Uh, Muller, are you going to confront Destiny on his criticisms of Critical Drinker on Bridge on the Bridges podcast episode five on YouTube? He said Drinker was the lowest common denominator of film critique. Video has almost 140k views. Well, this would have been a political a political analyst with shitty media takes. What? What? Well, I was what? about to say this. This would have been sent before we did the segment on the anniversary where we did a couple of political people in a row talking about movies and we wanted to die <laughs> like listening to it. it was... What is it about politics that destroys people's brains when it comes to They can't <laughs> talk about a movie as a movie. It has to be in relation to current events, what are, and specifically the events that they're covering. It's a, it's a nightmare. And so, yeah, like I've, I've got issues with a bazillion different takes <clears throat> Destiny and many other political commentators have. Uh, I, I'm not in the realm of like hunting to have those conversations, honestly. I can't remember when it was. I feel like it was more than a year ago now, but we kind of decided it's like, I actually prefer more of us just breaking things down instead of being like, listen, you're insane. Um, but it doesn't mean we're going to stop or anything. I, I, just, I just mean that I've not really got much interest in... Uh, Explaining how Critical Drinker is not the lowest common denominator of film critique. Especially, we have a show where we just go over film critique from all over the place, and Drinker is far from the lowest common denominator. He's not even, <laughs> not even, not even in, in the, the realm. bottom half. No. Yeah. <laughs> fucking Batwoman got three seasons. It did. Three beautiful yeah. seasons. Crazy. He just had an NPC moment. My right wing man bad. That's usually how those videos end up. Yeah, right wing Nazi. Look at who he hangs out with. Blah blah blah. You know how yeah. it goes. Yeah. He sold I'll me right back in his lawyer. He sold me. I'm buying Hitman. That's funny. Be a oh <laughs> yes, of course. The uh, the classic. Yeah, the classic Hitman lie, <laughs> misrepresentation. This feminist talking point has been dry age 2013. Was that when that was made, 2013? Yeah, it was over a decade ago. Jeez. <laughs> What's the line from yeah. The Future Past? <laughs> to have precious few of those years back. <laughs> 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 oh, 
too true, Magneto. Yeah, too true. Uh, a lot of people don't realize they are asexual. Which one's that again, where you don't have a sexuality That's kind nobody, of? No, yeah, basically, like, you're not interested in anybody. Wouldn't they realize that? I feel like that is something you'd realize more than not. Because <clears throat> everyone else mm. talks about that sort of thing, yeah, and you'd guess, be like, I, guess I don't maybe. feel that at all, so, hmm. Yeah. NPC moment, NPC moment, NPC moment. They got little alarm emojis on that. I think they mean like buzzwords and stuff, which, yeah, I'm with you. Um, didn't get go off about tangents earlier. Oh, and they said hi, Rags. We have to wait on that one. Hello. Oh, my God. I'm back. Uh, you did this to us. You begged him to say things, and now somehow it's worse. <laughs> We probably did. We probably said have an opinion that he finally did. It yeah. was horrible. Oh god, it's as worse as we should have expected. Uh, Uncle Ben was fridged. Never forget Uncle Ben was always meant to be unalived. The canon event death. How it works. Ugh. Ha ha ha. Jeez. Uh, pear character flying in the air with red cape and a smile on his face. I, I like those descriptions because that is accurate to what you see as the little flying thing. Thank it's, you. Um, it's like an Anthony Grimuglia analysis. <laughs> yeah. That's the deep cut analysis, okay? You, you gotta pay for that. <laughs> uh, Bayonetta comments equal movie Bob cringe sketch energy. Did Bayonetta get mad? Oh yeah, because it would have been Anita again, yeah. Oh, uh, yes, I think so. Much like women, cooking was a mistake. Cooking was a mistake. No, it wasn't. Cooking's Cooking great. great. Yeah. I say as I'm eating <laughs> a little snack. I bet he hated Utena because it calls out groomers. What's Utena? Something about that sounds familiar. Hmm. I don't know what that is, though. Fair enough. Uh, EFAP has been with me through high school, college, and now the army. This show has positively impacted my life as well as many others. I hope to get to meet you and buy you all a drink someday. Until then, Godspeed, Massives. Oh, hey, maybe. Uh, honestly. But thanks very much. Yeah, it's, it's cool to, to hear. hear that, though. I mean, We've been around for so long that... <laughs> a se a seven-year <laughs> chunk of someone's life is... I mean, that's a lot, you know? All kinds of yeah. things could have happened depending on where you're at, so... I mean, technically speaking, no matter where you're at, so yeah, it's... Uh, I'm I'm glad to know we're still entertaining you, apparently. And, uh, hey, yeah, maybe someday, maybe someday. Maybe a live EFAP in, uh, where, where would be the best venue? The White House on the roof with the entire right. crowd of the world around us. And then we just review some Trungos, crappy YouTube so... video. <laughs> Trungos, yeah. Trungo, go to Trungos. They'd be so confused, the Trungo people. We'd be like, just go with it. <laughs> Listen, we're going to pay for, like, this like table for all day and we want to live stream from here to sit us in a corner we're gonna be at trunk make Goes. your best food today <laughs> all right we're give gonna... us your finest chickpea grumbo yes <laughs> make an enormous just every chickpea grumbo bottle and barrel and, and bowl and cauldron you have uh, fuck this, I'm watching Gore, Gura, and Ceres Fauna do a new brace in Dark Souls 1 we can't really do a new brace, though, because me and Metal are too familiar. Um, uh, Wolf's pretty familiar. Fringy, you're vaguely familiar. Rags would be funny to watch play Maybe Dark Souls. first playthrough. You wouldn't like it, I don't think. It's not my kind of... It's just not my kind of game. It's not my kind of game. I respect it 100%. Um, until I saw Theo's video, of course. But <laughs> I just... Uh, I don't... Uh, it's just not it's not my kind of thing and that's all right not it believe it or not here's something something i have learned not everything has to be for me Ooh. that's okay man it's all right you mean like the acolyte and yet you had to go after it it wasn't meant for you it was meant for me as a proud black lesbian woman oh my that God. show was supposed to be everything that i needed in real star wars i needed to feel represented in the force i did see um a tweet that was like did you imagine they made Base lesbians and it was unpopular with a male audience. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, geez, good job, guys, you did it. Um, as someone who watched all of Steven Universe, it desperately needed a writer who knew what the fuck they were doing. I never watched it. I don't know anything no, about Steven Universe. I think Jay made a video saying it was shit, right? At least the latest season. Yes. 
Uh, why would you do this to Theo? It's not even EFAP 300 yet. Oh, just see what we did to him on 300. And, and past that, he was on the Alana Pierce episode. Poor guy. He gets brutalized by EFAP. Quite funny. <laughs> when he keeps coming back. <laughs> Interesting. Ready for chat to tell me how gay I am. Yeah, apparently, because they introduced this thing where you can reply to Super Chats now, as in you click the button and... Yeah, and yeah. A lot of people on the EFAP chat just say gay back to every Super Chat, so... <laughs> That's how you know nature, nature is healing. Nature is healing. The gays are taking over. Rags, old reliable, pulls out Adolf reference. Listen. Uh, in your book of true. best jokes of all time, right? It's uh, on page three. Con convinced my mum want convinced my mum to watch Lord of the Rings Extended. She never seen any of them in any version. I'm honestly jealous she gets the first time experience with them. Yeah, it'd be pretty fun to do that all for the first time again. That was a Especially question we got now. super chatted once. What was a piece of media that you could experience for the first time over again? And I think my answer was Fellowship of the Ring. Especially now, where after like how would it feel to watch that the, the three extendeds in the cinema? The first time now with the, with how everything is, mm. and yeah. that was like a new release. I feel like we would actually be blown away. We wouldn't believe it. We were like, how is it We'd possible? Explode. I would. How did they make this? Who made this, and why? Someone's gonna get fired for this blunder. Because uh, that's something I always wonder about the the nature of film releases. Um, would we watch it and think, like, like I guess if they updated some of the CG in it. We wouldn't be con we'd be convinced it was brand new, wouldn't we? Because it would just, it would look amazing. We wouldn't be saying, "Oh, this is from the two thousands for sure." At least I don't think so. Unless we would be able to notice some like I don't know directing tropes, in a in a way. It's the most unself aware, or most yeah self aware unaware video covered, right? Uh, that's a tough one. We've covered yeah, a lot there's of those. A, there's a, a lot list. of videos in the running for that, so, yeah. Long list of those. Babylon is an anime about a city that legalizes self-termination. Some 10 out of 10 episodes, wonderful character work, and a few bad reveals, though. Tell Theo, lol. Uh, I can't tell him right now, but fair enough. Is it? So, sounds like an interesting premise, I suppose. Is there anything else to this world, or is that the only thing? Because that could be our world if they just changed the law. Yeah, I figure maybe there's more to it than that. Um, or maybe it's like you come in well into that having been the law, and so what does the society look like? Could be a lot of changes, I guess. I don't know. Uh, suicide booths, right? The Futurama thing. that yeah. We're getting closer and closer to being a reality every day. Um, bum, bum. Where did you take a class on duck fringing at bird school? A school for birds? Hmm. On on like what ducks in general? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah. Is that what you would learn at bird school? Just all of the different birds? Hmm. I don't know that I know that much about ducks. That feels like a a gap in a, in a certain sense of my knowledge about all of the birds of the world. I feel like I know more about, like, hawks and eagles and stuff than ducks. Ducks are neat. Mm -hmm. I think ducks I are cool. I really I like, like ducks. ducks. I, like, I like ducks. I like how they quack. I like how they float around in water with happy, with smiles on their faces. They, they look like they've got it all figured out. They're cool to watch, yeah. Swimming around. The Meowth with Team Rocket is special and can speak English. 99.9% .9 of Pokemon can't speak English. That one's my favorite, then. All right. That is quite ironic, because he's going after Eric July. Trolls have caused him to have lawsuits. A guy went to his family's graveyard, lol. Oh, this would have been the harassment section, probably, um, where... It's stated like, you know, they they go over the thing again, like, oh, you send out to actors, blah, 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 blah. Um, when it's like, arguably, depending on what you look at for, like, information. Because I was about to say the, the um, is it Fabian, the guy from House of the Dragon? He got, like, really weird attacks on his character because of the character he played. Oh, the guy who plays um, Aegon? 
No, actually, I'm pretty sure he was. He made it out better. It, uh, it was the guy who played Cole, Kristen Cole. Oh. Yeah, he got he got like heavy. He had to like delete or remove or, or like temporarily disable his Instagram. I think. Jeez, that's you don't hear about that one as much, behavior. do you? No, you don't. Interesting. Curious. Uh, Which is terrible because Kristen Cole is a great character. Oh, he's back up in our like favorites area now, thanks to season two. He uh, yep. yes. got some good work for him in that one. Warhammer model of the whenever, Death Killer War Trike of the Orc Armies. Also, howdy rags and Fringalini. Hey. Death Killer War Oh, Death Killer War Trike. Let me get you a picture of it. Hmm. Because this is our whatever of the day. <laughs> what? Just like it's asking me for cookie settings. Reject. Welcome to the war. Just let me look at the picture. Copy. Hopefully this will be be big. What is is that big enough? Yeah, it's big enough. Yeah, it's fine. Well, look at him. Look at them. Oh yeah, it's two of them. Yeah, it's a they them. <laughs> well. I guess uh, this is, is this like a significant unit? I don't no. know. I have no idea. I have no clue. I got, I got nothing. I, got, I have no clue. They look neaterino. Oh my god, he basically just used the words are violence argument. It all comes back to the same position. Definitely nearing violence. the end of his video. Thanks for the list of actors that I can harass. Hi, Rags. Hey! The pipeline. He said the line. <gasps> he thought he was being so badass at the end. It's, it's all the same points. Heard him a million times. Meh, meh, meh. Reviewing movies leads to destroying the whole world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alrighty. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to debate a friend on movies, but they keep telling me that objectivity for movies and media in general is not possible because it's all an opinion. You gotta start with just tiny stuff. Just introduce the idea by talk about. I mean, what what's something they think is is like out of character for a character to do in whatever movie, and then you know, maybe not out of character. Start with plot holes. Plot holes are the best ones. Yeah, start to... yeah. Start out with really basal stuff. Like, um, can you like can you accurately report facts about what's in a movie? Things of that nature. And. Uh, with plot holes, you can get them to the point of at least acknowledging their existence and then acknowledging that it should not be that way, but that at the same time, then you need to get over the hurdle of uh, whether or not that's, you know, it comes to the point of saying whether or not a plot hole even counts for anything discussion. There's a lot to go over. You'd need to set some serious groundwork about definitions and <clears throat> points of view and then how we use lack of bias. And how we surely the being objective is on a scale rather than a binary, and then you know what does it look like to strive toward it in relation to discussing things that are about your experiences as a person slash your uh, what you learn from a thing or how you an analyze a thing, because um, packed into almost all analysis is plenty of reference to things that actually need to be accurate half the time. What you're saying is, is stuff that's actually there versus stuff you feel, and so. All very interesting, complicated conversation. I wish you the best of luck in having it. Yep. And start that, small, start very basic, go very foundational. And that's the last of the messages for that particular oh. EFAP. Hey, all right. Thank you all so much. And we shall... Yeah, uh, everyone. See you for the next one. We appreciate it. Toodle pip. Cheerio. Yeah, Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye -bye. We will see you later. See ya.